uh, I think uh, once you write a normal hello world program in python after that the first thing that you really do it anything that you want to use you want to import a library right you just import a library into the python right. So, uh, this talk is going to really see how what happens when you really import a library into the python. Um, little bit of history prior to 3.3 python this whole import system was wrapped in a C library and was implemented in C. So, uh, if you want to do anything you have to really go back and understand the C library and you know like go back and try to in, you know uh, debug that uh, piece of the C library. But after 3.3 the default implementation of uh, uh, import lib is been in python and that is a that is a defect one means like after 3.3 import lib which is written in python is the one which is going to be used in python for the import system. So, basically what exactly really happened is that the C library has been taken and then completely rewritten into python and then implemented in 3.3 version afterwards. So, it has exposed lot of internals to you so that you can really go back and do your customization if you really want it. So, prior to it it was really difficult to do it. Conceptually nothing has really changed the overall orchestration how it was working in 2.5 and onwards, but in 3.3 the internals are only specific to the python implementation ok. So, uh, bit of terminology here uh, this is what I am really going to use throughout the talk. So, I just thought I will just have a quick uh, terminology here finder is the one which finds a loader and loader is the one which loads a module into your namespace. So, met meta path finder is the one which you found on sys dot meta path it contains the finders or it gets you a finder. Path entry finder is the one which is going to get you again loader, but it searches in the sys path import path ok. Oops, I think there is one ok before going to I think there is a let us skip this let us start with the first step I think I do not know why it is showing in a different. So, this is what I mean you, you can say import library or you can say from dot dot bar import bar module that is what I think you are going to do it right. When you do this it is just converted into a function call downwards. The function is dunder import which is part of the import lib library. So, what are the arguments that we really pass for the import that dunder import function the name of the module that you are really importing it globals and locals generally it is going to be default is none and then the list of modules that we are really trying to import it from that particular uh, this one and then the index of it particularly if you are really know about relative import you are trying to say that import this particular one from two levels above. So, that is the index that really passed to this one. So, this will do all the magic and get you the module into your namespace. So, just try to understand this as a just a function call which is when you say import some library it is converted into a function call down. So, uh, <coughs> Let us talk a little bit of the import system. So, this is the flow I think there is a this is in the order this is the flow that what really happens when you try to import a module. There is a module cache you have in a system module there is a modules is a, uh, a modules is a dictionary where you store all your module cache. So, as soon as you try to import a library it first goes and checks whether this module is already is present in the module cache in the sys modules if it is not there then it really goes and then asks for the meta path finders. There are list of finders in this meta path fight go back and ask each of the finder can you find me a loader for this particular name of the you know import library that my module that I am trying to import it. If it finds a module I think you really sorry if it finds a loader it will return the loader and then you can load the module. If it is not going to find a loader there then it goes to the next step next step is the path finders. So, you have a sys path I think uh, you know when you want to really put generally if you install the default python it comes all with the libraries, but you have your own specific library what you really do it is you go and put a python path which is an external library. This is what the sys path is going to have all of the default as well as the external path that you really have given it. So, the path finder will go back and see find out can you find out a loader for this particular path for all the paths it is go back and look at it the name that you are really given it looks at all of the paths. 
But even before going to the path switch, there is another, you know, like uh, path, uh, like uh, path importer cache. I mean, whatever that you already looked at the directories, it is going to cache it, and then you know, it, it's it's if it is already available there, it it'll know what is the file finder that it has to really go back and look at it. It will not go back and rescan it. If it is not there, then go to path hooks. Path hooks is a list of you know, like again, importers which will go back and do a different things. We'll go and a little bit get into the what is path hooks. Once you find all these things, the first piece, what are the first three steps is to find a loader. Once you have the loader object is available to you, then you have to really load this load loader into your name space as a module. It loader is going to, I mean this is very high level abstraction of what loader is doing it. It goes back, you are now trying to say import module 1 dot module 1, right. It goes back and looks where is this source code available for this particular file. Somewhere in your file system there is a dot py file, right. Go back and take the code, compile that into a byte code and then once you have a byte code, create a module object and then once you create a module object, execute the byte code in this module dict dict scope that gives you a module object and then that is what is going to be available for you and then you can start working with that. So, uh, I am not sure how much is really gone in, but let us see even few more you know like uh, you know, at the end of it I have a kind of go through all of the demo kind of things, so which might give you a little bit clarity, but this is what is the overall flow. You go back and look at this you know like module cache, if the module is available, just return the module, if it is not available, go and ask the metapath finder, give me the finders, all the finders, each one of the finder will see if we can find a, uh, find a loader for you, if it is not happening, go to the path finders, if that is, if that is there, then you create a module object using the loader. So, uh, this is what is really happening. Actually, there is this has gone a little behind. I do not know why, but anyhow. So, module cache. So, all of the modules are cached in sys dot modules. So, it is just a dictionary, it is a full name. If you are really importing a package dot, you know, uh, if you are importing a package dot uh, 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 module or a package dot uh, sub package dot module, the whole full qualified path is going to be there here. It is a, a dictionary and then the module object is going to be there, okay. So, um, again there is only one object in python which is called as module. We have a little bit higher level of that is a packages right, we have packages right. The package is also a type of module ok. So, there, there is only a subtle difference between a module and the package, but all of them belongs to the all of them are of module objects. So, uh, one difference between the earlier version and then the new version is uh, the lock is at the module level. Actually earlier it used to be when you really try to import a module in python previous it was at the whole process level, but now in uh, in the new uh, 3.3 implementation onwards it is at each of the module level. So, if, if you are importing multiple modules the lock is at each of the module level not at the process level. I think it may not really uh, you know make a difference for you are really running a single process which is a, not a multi threaded, if you are real doing multi threaded then it really have an impact, otherwise generally it is not going to have any impact. Okay. So, um, we, we talked about sys dot module, there is a module cache which is a dictionary. So, next one is finders. So, there are I mean actually this list of finders is keep increasing as it really going through multiple versions of python. Uh, there are um, primarily the uh, three things are built in modules finder, frozen modules finder and default path finder. So, uh, simply if you look at the code here, it goes to each of the finder, sys dot metapath is a list of finders ok. It goes to each of the finder and as the find, just can you find a module for me and if the if sorry can you find a mo this module, if it, it finds it, it will return a loader. Once if the loader is there, return a load module, load module is nothing but whatever that I explained as a you know going to the source, compiling to the byte code and then giving everything object back. That object is returned back. If you do not find anything, it gives a import error. So, when you try to import something which is not there anywhere either in the you know like your uh, uh, you know default libraries or in the custom custom things, then you will get an import error saying that this module is not found, right. So, these are the three uh, uh, you know like these are actually classes, they are there in the list of in the uh, sys meta path. It, go, it goes and iterates through each one of them to find a loader, that is the first step. Okay, so, there is a concept of uh, <coughs> namespace packages, anybody is aware what is a namespace package? 
So, uh, in Python 3, generally what do you really do when you create a package? You create a directory and you put your module there, right? When you put a module, the first thing that you rely, what is the first thing that you really write it? Dunder init.py, right? Dunder init.py, if it is there in the directory, it means that is a package. But in Python 3, you do not have to have a Dunder init file. Even then, Python recognizes that is a package. But that a little difference is that this same directory can be present in a multiple places in our whole uh, operating system in different folders, okay. But Python is what is really trying to do is in the namespace, if it is a namespace package, it is going to collect all this from different. For example, you have one directory where you have a module 1, in the same created the same directory in other place, but you have a module 2, it really collates both of them into a single package. So, that is what is a namespace package which is new in Python 3, but which is not there early, earlier. Okay, so um, once sys metapath, the finder is you do not get anything, then get into the path hooks. So, basically again this is path importer cache is the, the is a, it is the you know like which you have already looked at a directory, it is going to cache there and then first look at it, if that is not already passed it, then go to the sys path hooks. So, I am not sure whether you can really look at, there are only two of them are there, one is a zip importer, other one is a uh, file finder, these are the two things. Even in Python 3, you can even import a package which is completely wrapped in a zip file. If you have just a zip file, you can go back and import that as a package. So, file finder is, if you have really, you know like if you are asking for a particular module or a package to really load it, it, it really goes through all of the, all of the elements in the sys.path sys.path contains all of the paths that you want to look at it, it goes through each one of them and then if you find a module it returns back. This is the order in which really it goes, first it looks for the zip import, then it goes to the file finder. So, maybe again just a take a step back, I will so, we started, we try to import a module, you are looking at the module cache, if it is not there, you are looking at, sorry, so uh, if it is not there in the module cache, it will go, go back to sys meta path to find, to ask each of the finder whether you can find a module for me, it is not there, it comes to path hooks and if it is not, if it is not there, it will give an error. So, once it finds a loader, the next thing is to really create a module object, that is what is really happening. So, module object is take the source code, compile it, compile to a byte code, create a module object and then execute in that scope of that module object, give that uh, uh, object back to it. So, you have seen there is a PYC files in your directory when you really go back and uh, you know when you run some of this code, you get dot PYC files. You know what are these PYC files? That is a byte code, that is what whatever that we really compiled now, which is there, which is a put into the byte code into the particular directory. Actually before it really loaders go and create this file, it goes back, looks into the directory where this PYC file files are already available. If they are not available there, then only it will go back and do it. Not only not available, but even it is changed since lots it has been loaded. If it changed lots since loaded, again it re-generates the PYC files. There is one difference in three, three. Uh, earlier it used to have all the PYC files generated in the same directory as such, but now there is a Dunder PyCache directory will be created inside in 3. I think it is a neat one where you have multiple, even if you use the same code work, you know like uh, worked with different lib different versions of the library or different versions of the Python, it has all of the libraries in that PyCache directory, Dunder PyCache directory, so that they are available, they are not you know like uh, overwritten. Uh, Priya, I mean there are a lot of changes that is happening. Actually, it, it took uh, you know like uh, uh, Brett Cannon is the one who has really the core developer on this you know like uh, import lib library and uh, I think they are still changing, they are really improving this over, you know they have put into 3.3, .3, but they are improving it. So, they have some of them they have deprecated like a find module and you know like load module, the some of the methods were there, they deprecated that then they have created a new concept called module spec. Module spec is a specification of the whole module 
I mean look whatever that module where it really resides and you know, how to create the loader where you really find the loader everything is going to be wrapped up into the module spec. This is actually changed in 3.4 onwards. I mean some of the methods that you might see find module is deprecated and then say they say find spec now instead of find module. Okay, so uh, if you I mean this is again a simple python code uh, replication of how the module is getting created. If you look at if I give a name of the module this for this particular function, it goes and finds you know uh, module name whatever that you uh, give it, it appends dot py to find the file name, it, it opens that file name, read the whole code and then once you have the whole code, it creates a module type that is a module object and then once you have that module object, you compile into the byte code, the code equals to compile, these are all the default python you know like uh, functions available to compile source code and source path and in the execute mode and then once you have the code byte code you execute that byte code in the scope of that module, module dictionary and then whatever that you get an object that is what is returned back to the user as a lib as a module. Okay. So, um, this is what is changed in 3.6. So, I mean the the whole code whatever is written there I have abstracted into uh, no steps here. So, instead of finding a loader what it uh, finding a loader what it really does it it is find a module specs to start with. Once you have a module spec create a module object from the module spec and then add the module object to sys dot modules and then execute the module and return the module object. So, why should we really cache is cache is required so that you do not have to reload everything, but there is another reason for having uh, sys dot modules caching in the sys dot modules particularly to solve a problem of circular imports. So, I mean what happens is I think you can go back and write in such a way that I import a package this package imports that package and then that package again starts importing something from the other package. So, it can create a circular imports. So, as soon as you really even before you really create the module you are trying to go and then put into the sys dot modules. So, that to avoid the problems of circular import as soon as it is there it will stop. I mean if it is already there in the sys dot modules it will really pick it from there it will not really go and do remaining pieces of it. So, but all these things is okay, but what is and uh, as a developer how is it going to help me or what I can do or what I cannot do. So, what I cannot do is you cannot startify the you cannot modify the startup process whatever that is really happening it happens as it is and then you cannot modify the main scope, main scope is going to be intact and you cannot even change any of the language features. It is only you can do customization of some of the import things, but not the language features as such. Let us look at what we can do. Let us say you have a you know I mean it may may not be the need, but you have a need to really go back and say in your organization uh, to import or log what are the imports are happening in your organization. You can go back and put a custom you know like a hook there and then it will try to log each time you go and run the import it will go and log somewhere saying that this is what is really happening this is a you know like module that is being imported. If you have uh, need to really import something from remote host not from your host, but something is available in your remote host you can go back and do it. So, uh, virtual import paths it is not really physically present virtual import paths you can really go and hook them up. Uh, fix circular imports and uh, lazy imports. So, uh, maybe if you can go on uh, you know like uh, there is one talk by uh, David Beasley where he really he will he really implements how you can really use the lazy imports. Generator is a lazy you know, evaluation right I think it is not going to evaluate till you really call the next function on top of it. Similarly, you can go back and import it when you really import it nothing is really happened at that point of time, but really go and call that particular module somewhere then you really import that module at the point of time. It has both pros and cons of it, uh, but still you can go and import the lazy imports you can go and implement the lazy imports here. Post import hooks I mean once uh, the import is happen if you want to do something you can go back and do that custom module types you can create your own custom module types if required. So, uh, there are some references here how import works that you know there is a actually you know like it is a huge flow chart that can takes through each one of them starting from each step by step what exactly will really happen and David Beasley's uh, modules and, and packages live and let die. So, I think that is a very good, uh, but it is like 3 hour long video, but if you have patience you can go and watch it, but he have he has really explains clearly on modules packages and all these uh, different things there. 
and the getting the most out of Python imports is another talk, I think, which is, uh, you know, uh, how to do a little bit of customization here and there. So, uh, that's what I really have. Any questions? Anything else? Questions, please. Okay. Uh, sir, I have a file and I have written some code. Then I use import file actually. And uh, then the cache will be like uh, uh, full of that file. Uh, what if, if I change something in my main file and I re-import it, then it is going to compile the complete thing or the added part? Okay. Actually, if we look at it, once you import once in your namespace, it's already cached in the sys.modules. Even if you modify the file, underlying file, if you try it any number of times, it always bring from sys, uh, like uh, module cache. It means it will never take the new ones at, as into consideration at all. The general way is people go back, terminate the process, you start the process again, re-import it, okay, that is one way of doing it. If you want to reload the same module back again with the changes, you can still do it, but there are a lot of, you know, uh, things that you may have to really remember before doing it. For example, if it is a class, you have created an object of the class somewhere and then you change the definition of the class, the objects are going to be there as it is, the instances of that object are going to be there. So, it can create some zombies kind of thing inside your whole system. So, it is you need to be careful when you are re-importing it, but by default, once the module is imported, you cannot, you cannot re-import, the import will not again re-import thing. It will always go back and look at the sys, the cache module, if it is there, it will bring from there. It will not go back to again to the source, recompile and do all the stuff. No, no, PYC has also not. PYC file is deleted, you will regenerate the PYC file, but it will not reload the module. Yeah. Next question. Uh, so, uh, you mentioned that you can, uh, there is two f methods there. Uh, one is find module and one is load module. Okay. So, and uh, in the load module, you had raised an import error, but say you actually want to uh, let it load. Yeah. So, what do you do? Like uh, That is all. I think when I say load module, there are three, four or five steps. Now, what you do is, you go back, find out the source, where is the file is available, take the source, read the whole source, compile it into a byte object, create a module type and execute that module type and create a, create a module object. At the end of the day, loader will create a module object and return that module object back. The loader will, if you have to really implement the uh, loader module, you have to do that. Uh, 